Hey guys, welcome to Data Track, your one-stop channel for all the data science and machine learning updates. In today's video, we will look at PID controller and its applications in data science. We will start with what the PID controller is, how is it used in industries, and why the concept is so widely popular that it has its applications in data science. We will also look at Pinterest company as a case study how it has used PID controller in its production systems. So we have a lot to cover so let's get started. PID controller, a proportional integral derivative controller is a control loop mechanism employing feedback that is widely used in industrial control systems and a variety of other applications wherever a continuously modulated control is needed. Some everyday examples would be keeping the room temperature constant even with the varying temperature outside. The cruise control on a car with a constant engine power. So how that constant engine power is achieved while ascending a hill would lower the speed. Here the control on the constant engine power is achieved through the speed. In practical terms, PID automatically applies an accurate and responsive correction to a control function. The PID controller is broadly applicable since it relies on the response of the measure process variable, not on the knowledge or uh, understanding of how the underlying process works. Just the response of the process variable is needed. The uh, control function mathematics, let's look into it. Overall control function at time t period is given by ut is a function of error term proportional to the error term integral of the total errors till now that is the total corrections we have made till now and the rate at which the error is changing now discretizing this control function which is currently in its continuous form we the integral gets converted into summation and derivative becomes the difference between the error term between two consecutive time frames now tuning needed at each time stem will be ut plus 1 minus ut will be P of ET minus ET minus 1 plus I multiplied by ET and D multiplied by ET minus 2, ET minus 1 plus ET minus 2. So P, I and D are just coefficients of the proportional integral and derivative term. And the corrected control value at next time stamp will be the control functions value at time T, UT plus the uh, this term. Now if uh, PID are non-negative coefficients of proportional integral and derivative term, ut is the overall control function, sp is the set value where we want the control system uh, to be set at and process variable is the process variable's response and et is just the error between the target and the actual which is pv uh, and sp, what is the difference between them. Now if we look at this function, something magical happens. The control function is just a function of error terms. If I know the error at time t, t minus 1 and t minus 2, I can cal calculate what is the correction needed. The PID controller is widely popular and broadly applicable since it relies only on the response of the measure process variable that is the error without any knowledge of the underlying process. In case of the cruise control example, the control function applies to speed. In case of room temperature, the control function applies to the knob which we are adjusting depending on the error or correction at every time interval. The mathematical model in the control function uses a direct control action which means an increasing positive error results in an increasing positive control output correction. The system is called reverse acting if it is necessary to apply negative corrective action. Next let's look at the same formula in more details. Term P is proportional to the current value of SP minus PV which is the error term. For example, if the error is large, the control output will be proportionally large using the gain factor of P. Term I accounts for the past values of SP minus PV error that is it integrates the error over time that is how much corrections we have made till now. When the error is eliminated, the integral term will cease to grow and it will hold the stable control functions value. Term D is the best estimate of the future trend. It is also called as anticipatory control. The more the rapid the change, the greater the controlling or damping effect will be. Controllers are used in industries to regulate temperature, pressure, force, feed rate, flow rate, chemical composition, weight, position, speed and every other variable which has a measurement. Although a PID controller has three control terms which is P, I and D, some applications may need only one or two terms. This is achieved by setting unused parameters to zero and it gives rise to controllers like PI, PD, P or just I controller. PI controllers are fairly common in applications where derivative actions would be sensitive to the noise. 
but the integral term is often needed for the system to reach its target value. Why? Because integral terms keep the total corrections we have made till now, which is the stable value of the control function. Now we will do a practical exercise. I have simulated temperature. You can see the temperature is fluctuating a lot, but we have put the set value to 20. So over the time, uh, with the, we start with zero because we don't know how to control the temperature and we just change the loop depending on the error we are getting. And after a point of time, uh, the error function stabilizes at 20. And this can be achieved only by modeling uh, on the error that is error at time t, t minus 1 and t minus 2. Let's look at the Kaggle notebook, which I will make available in the description section. So I will add the link of the notebook in the description section. First, I have simulated the temperature over a period. There are many fluctuations in the temperature. And then this is the correction that we want to make it every time frame. The correction is only depending on dependent on error at time t, t minus 1 and t minus 2. And the difference function, which is the function to calculate the error is just set value minus the process variables response, which is the uh, temperature at that point. We have started with the ut of 0, that is we don't know what the uh, correct uh, value of control function is, so we start with 0 and the sp is 20, which is the fixed temperature is 20 and the correction that we make is just this, the formula that we have seen, p into error 0 minus error 1, i into error 0 and d into error 0 minus 2 into error 1 plus uh, error 2, which is error 2 basically means time error at time t minus 2 and these are the values of the coefficients we have kept. And after all the correction, you can see after a point of time, it destabilizes to 19. Now the, um, it has learned that where the stable point is and the fluctuations will reduce. Even the temperature is fluctuating, we will reach the set point and then we'll just keep on making the change if there is a fluctuation or in the temperature to keep the room temperature at 20. And uh, this is how the error reduces. It was starting with 20 and this is how the error reduces and uh, if we had set the initial ut to 50 then also it would have reached the correct stable state but the uh, the way it would have reached is from it would have started at 50 and then reached 20 while in the other case it started with 0 and reached 20 there the errors uh, were high initially and then it re reduced here the error was negative that that is why the error is negative because we were over predicting the errors started from negative because we were over predicting it is starts from negative and then reaches the stable state so this is how you can just model on the on error at three time frames now previous and previous to previous to reach the stable state next let's look at how pid controller has its applications in data science the first application is from the pinterest block where they have used pid controller as controllable distributions. So using PID controller to diversify the content types on their home feed. So let's go to the blog. This is the blog which I have copied in a PDF so that it becomes easy to explain. Let's look at this blog of Pinterest where they have beautifully explained how they use PID controller to achieve controllable distribution. Every day millions of pinners visit the home feed to find inspiration. So in Pinterest. Pinterest basically has images and videos which are called pins and pinners are the users. They visit the website to get inspiration on some of the works. For example, fashion designers and even I visit Pinterest to get some of the ideas for my uh, templates and all. The ranking steam responsibility is that the content remains relevant. But what happens is that the content continuously becomes stale and so that the new content or the newly created pins should also get some visibility, right? Traditionally, the recommendation system models are built on click-through prediction model which maximize user engagement, but they do not satisfy business objectives. Business objectives like relevance, freshness, that is the dynamic uh, feed. Feed keeps on changing, new content keeps on coming, and as well as providing visibility to new content and new control creators. To solve this, they implemented PID controller as a controllable distribution and in the background section they have given an idea that before the controllable distribution uh, how it was uh, done and how it got messier to handle many business constraint as the constraints keeps on growing. So constraints are the special cases in the code base. The most common solutions where some business constraint is there that provide uh, 
x percentage of views to video content it was achieved using two ways one is inserting the content at every end slot or moving the content up and it became painful when the constraint starts to grow hand tuned views became unmanageable and also any new ranking model any new recommendation system model comes then it was delayed because they break business constraints so they wanted something easier and uh, simple next they have explained how they used pid controller to uh, attain controllable distribution which replaces all those hard coded constants now the business owner can specify a global target of the percentage that is how much percentage they want to give to a particular content for example 4% is set for videos then it, the pid controller will automatically determine how to achieve the distribution what is the boost needed and how will it decide it will see how the errors are looking like how the uh, response is of the process variable and it will make the corrections and it will automatically achieve that distribution and uh, this is the formula which we have already seen in our slide as well this is the pid controller formula where it knows how much boost it needs to give which is depending only on the error at time t t minus 1 and t minus 2 pid controller will help to come up with how much to boost the scores of content of a particular type like video so that the business constraint of exactly 4% views or x number of views can be achieved and this is how they implemented and uh, in next they have also explained the solution was very easier to implement because just uh, one function has to be implemented and which will boost the scores for content of special types which is video in this case Contr also the controllable distribution uh, used in production uh, has already provided them very help, good results and uh, it without any cost delays and the business constraints were met and a part of the original use case where they wanted where they have to provide x percentage of use to particular content type they also found new use case of controllable distribution which is uh, we have used controllable distribution to test the impact of different loads of various content types on the systems so x percentage of use came as a business constraint but what they did they provided different loads different percentage of use to the, the content and saw which one uh, was performing better so this was the other news, uh, new use case they find out that it can help them to find the impact of different loads and so that instead of business coming up with the rule they can suggest the rules to the business that, that this much percentage will provide the maximum or best results so yeah that's how the pinterest has used pid controller to boost uh, the scores of a particular content type so they uh, get exactly x percentage of views and when wherever uh, if the boost is more error will become negative and it will reduce the boosting and if the boost is less the error will be positive and it will increase the boosted score so in that way it will just achieve the right x percentage uh, constraint that the business has set other example is self driving car in self driving car what happens the uh, the steering needs to be moved right so as soon as the car deviates from the path it has to follow the control function does a feedback correction coming from the error and the feedback controls the steering changes the how much it has to move the steering right or left to remain in the path these are some of the applications of pid controller in data science field and we will try to uh, simulate that distribution example the similar to what pinterest has done through this kaggle notebook so I will provide the link of the Kaggle notebook in the description section. So here we will use PID controller to achieve the ideal distribution and that ideal distribution we will give as a business constraint. We have three dimensions or you can think of it as we have three type of contents having equal visibility 33%, 33% and 33%. But what we want to do is we provide, want to provide or we want to control the distribution in a constrained way where we want to provide 15% to the first content type 25% to the second content type and 60% to the third content type it adds up to 100 or 1 the task can also be seen as we are changing the uniform distribution to a distribution of choice now the error function we have used is uh, we can use either KL divergence or we can use just simply the difference between the current uh, uh, visibility it's getting and what is the ideal we want we can use scale divergence because if you see here if the initial requirement was of 0.25 and if we are providing 0.5 which is more it will uh, provide a negative error so we can reduce the visibility and if it's providing 
exactly the same amount of visibility as we need the error is zero and if it provides uh, 0.25 visibility while, while the requirement of zero was 0.5 it is providing lower visibility the error is positive so we move uh, to a positive correction so in this way any error function which satisfy this constraint that uh, if the uh, prediction is more it should be a negative error and if the prediction is accurate it should be zero error and if the prediction is under predicting the error is positive then we can use that error function and how uh, this is the function where i have implemented the formula that this is the correction which we have already seen which depends on p i and d on the three error terms error at time t t minus 1 and t minus 2 now if we introduce controllable distribution to just first dimension that that is we only want the first dimension to have 15 percent visibility and uh, other distribution we haven't put any constraint we want it to vary uh, by itself so uh, what will happen the first distribution starts with 33 percent visibility and goes till 15 percent like close to 15 percent it has achieved that and what is the boost needed the boost needed is we need to uh, decrement the score by 0.22 minus 0.22 the reason is it was getting 33 percent now to bring it to 15 we have to reduce or ne negatively uh, boost the score right so that is shown here as well after we can also see that uh, other two distributions they achieve 42 and 42 that is they got equally penalized uh, because we didn't put any constraint on them and if we put controllable distribution just to the second dimension that is the second uh, one we want 25 percent visibility that can that will also be achieved here if you see it has achieved that visibility and to achieve that it has to do a negative boost of minus 0.09 and other two distributions are uh, mostly very similar or equal because we haven't put any constraint on them if we put the same controllable distribution to just the third dimension it has achieved 60 percent and the other two dimensions are uh, mostly equal to around 19 percent and the boost we need is positive the reason is it was getting 33 percent score now to make it 60 percent we have to increase or boost up the score now also if you have to put a controllable distribution to all the dimensions that can also be done here we have uh, put the constraint on all the three distributions and we have achieved them 0 0.15 0 0.26 which is close to 0 0.25 and 0 0.58 which is close to 0 0.6 and if we run it for more number of iterations it will go even more closer and to achieve that we need to negatively boost the first dimension score uh, negatively boost the second dimension score and positively boost the third dimension score by this much and we will uh, get this uh, distribution so with the help of internal feedback loop just which is in form of error the pid controller has gracefully solved the task for us and isn't it amazing that we have any distribution and we can put constraint on it or we can uh, decide how much visibility we need to give and pid controller will adjust the scores lastly let's look at some of the limitations of pid controller the biggest problem with pid controller is that Sometimes the content, uh, depending on the content type, which some may require large boost while some may require small boost. So tuning P, I and D terms, which are the coefficients, depending on the content type is hard to maintain. And second limitation is that the PID controller does not guarantee optimal control of the system or its control is stability. Some of the situations it can happen that the response comes with delays. So in those cases, the optimal control is not guaranteed and we may need a effective lead, lead lag compensation and the final uh, limitation of PID controller is uh, PID controller is a feedback control system and no direct knowledge of the underlying process is needed it's more of a reactive component so while PID controller is the best controller in observer setup and where it observes the response sometimes better performance can be obtained by directly modeling the actor of the process without resorting to an observer setup. With that, we come to the end of this video where we covered a lot of things. We covered what PID controller is, how the mathematics of PID controller works. We looked at a practical example where the temperature was fluctuating and we brought it to a set value. We also looked at how PID controller is used in data science. We looked at PID controller uh, application in Pinterest, how they have used PID controller in their production systems. And we also did a practical where we brought a uniform distribution to a distribution of our choice. As PID controller needs feedback, it will be great if you can also provide feedback in terms of like, share and subscribe to the channel. So stay tuned, like and subscribe. 
and uh, see you with more content bye